Midst. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. It's so wonderful. We look forward to being together on Sunday morning so that we can celebrate the divine liturgy and give thanks. The very essence of the liturgy is to give thanks to God for the countless blessings that we receive throughout our life and as members of this church of St. Catherine, as members of the body of Christ. We heard in the gospel today about a woman who was uh, under an oppressive spirit that prevented her from her being able to stand up straight for, for 18 years. We don't know truly the nature of this illness. Did she have scoliosis? Did she have a cramp in her back that was unusual? Was it something worse? Or perhaps it was all of that and combined with a spirit of negativity that said to her, who am I to raise my face to God? Who am I to look to God? I'm unworthy. I'm a sinner. But the Lord, he saw her. And never do we see in the gospel that the Lord first, before he works a miracle, that he must perfectly analyze the nature of the illness. He simply said, you will be well. And she was freed. She stood up. And thus you may say, fulfilling, fulfilling the, the, the very nature of our, of our anthropology, who we are as people. The word anthropos, the word man, we can say comes from some Greek words of an ancient, char ancient character, anathraskondo, in other words, to stand erect before God. God has created us so that we will stand upright and, and speak to him face to face. But because of the combined nature of her ailments, she was not able to speak and stand and face God face to face. This, you might say, is the essence of all of the plight of man that we have. As we have sin, we become oppressed, and we say, who am I to speak to God? I can't even raise my eyes anymore to God. Or any type of ailment that comes into our mind that says to us that we are not worthy even to live. These, these spirits are not from God. And this is the spirit that she was freed from in the gospel today. Now it's interesting as we reflect on this gospel and the nature that our Lord Jesus Christ came to restore our humanity, I am calling to mind and I wish to share with you the two books that I'm holding in my hand. Two books. One book is called Truth Matters, Life Matters More. And it is written by the preeminent Hank Hanegraaff, known as the Bible Answer Man. And we'll tell you shortly a little bit about his background. And the other book, although Hank is a man who was, uh, who, who, uh, was born and bred and educated in the U.S., the second author has no formal education at all. His name, he's known as the Elder Ephraim of St. Anthony's Monastery in Arizona. And he's the founder, he's the founder of more than 18 monasteries in North America. And I am sad to say that he died last night. He was 92. He was born in 1927. And he wrote the book, The Art of Salvation. And when you read the book, which is a collection of his homilies, that he offered almost all of those homilies to his monastics. And a few were for lay people, maybe two or three in the book. But the rest were, were for monks. And you read the book and you say, how did this man, with no formal education, from a, from a poor family in Volos, Greece, how is it that he acquired such insight and such knowledge and such wisdom of the Orthodox faith that the world over he was regarded as a living saint? Well, here we have the collection of those writings. And the reason why that I'm holding them side by side is I'm hoping that it will create a hunger in us to read them. And it's, it struck me as I was reading the books by Father Ephraim and by Hank Hanegraaff that both of them, when it really boils down to it, they have 
the same message. One who was a lifelong Orthodox Christian and the other who didn't become an Orthodox Christian until maybe four or five years ago. And here's what they're indicating that the true meaning of our life in Christ uh, is for. Plain and simple, for sanctification. The word that they use is theosis, deification. In other words, we are all called to become partakers of the divine nature through our life in Jesus Christ. And here we have Hank Hanegraaff, this man known as the Bible Answer Man, who has a syndicated radio talk show that reaches more than 60 million people. And he comes to the realization that, that sanctification is the true inner purpose and meaning of our Christian life. And as we touched on a little bit in a prior homily, we'll revisit this again, how he came to this understanding. Sadly, it was not directly through the preaching or the instruction or the guidance of the Orthodox Church. It was by, through his Christian Research Institute, he was getting many call-in questions for his radio show, and they were saying, would you tell us who is this man in China named Watchman Nee and his follower, Witness Lee? They seem to be preaching something about the Christian faith that we don't quite get as Protestants. We don't understand it, and we think that they must be a cult in China. Can you have your Christian Research Institute look into his teachings? Because he has tens and thousands and even millions of followers, and we should be able to address this through our Research Institute. So Hang said, go and study. Find out what they're all about. Read the homilies. Read his writings. Read his doctrinal instructions. And let's see if we can figure out whether he's a Christian or not, because we'll have to address it one way or the other, because people are asking us constantly for an explanation. So he sent his team away. And they spent almost two years studying, because they had to translate from China many of his writings. And finally, they came back to Hank with an answer, with three words. Their answer was three words. We were wrong. He is not a heretic. He's not a cult leader. What we see is he's teaching the theology of the Eastern Orthodox Church. And here, Witness, uh, Witness Nee and Watchman Lee, I have it backwards, Watchman Nee and Witness Lee, they discovered this through their independent, their, their independent study of the Scripture and their desire for the truth. But this brings us to the title of the book, Truth Matters, Life Matters More. And it has a beautiful olive wreath on the cover. Because what Hank realized is having the truth is not necessarily enough. If we have the truth, but we don't live the truth. Jesus Christ said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Therefore, to say as Orthodox Christians that we have the truth because we proclaim the creed each Sunday, therefore we can rest, is not enough. We should be asking ourselves, are we living an Orthodox Christian way of life? Are we receiving the Eucharist? Are we forgiving? Are we embracing? Are we serving? Are we loving? And as Hank studied and reflected on these things, he said, I must go to a church that has the Eucharist. I must go to the ancient church that Watchman Nee was pointing to. And because he lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, he decided that he would visit the St. Nectarios Greek Orthodox Church, where the venerable Father Seraphim Didi serves, as well as Father Stephen Dalber as the presiding priest. And he went there humbly. Can you imagine a man of such greatness with a 60 million, a 60 million person following on the radio, humbly coming to the priest locally who he had never met and said, could you please explain this orthodoxy to me? I think I want to become orthodox. And sure enough, he was catechized and over several years, then he was received about five years ago, Mr. Hank Hanegraaff. 
He spoke at our church last spring as part of the Christian Rights and Freedom Institute, and he may visit us again on the 18th of January as part of the All Florida Archons Retreat. We hope you will mark your calendars for that day and join us. And that brings us now to Father Ephraim. So here we have Father Ephraim, and he's a humble monk, and he decides at the age of 14, I am going to go to the Holy Mountain. I feel a desire to pray. I feel a desire to know God and to be known by God. And with the blessings of his parents, he goes to the Holy Mountain. And before he went there, he heard that there was an elder there named Joseph who was living in a cave. And the courage of a 14-year-old boy, he said, maybe I should go and meet him. He would be a good guide. But before he went, he sent a few things from their humble family, and it was a, a small package of pasta that he sent there as a gift for the elder Joseph. And when the friends of the young Ephraim, when they brought it to the elder Joseph from Volos to the holy mountain, as he was opening the gifts and he saw the little note from the young Ephraim and he saw the pasta, he was touched by the sweetness of the offering of the gift. And he said prophetically, this boy who gave me this will become a monk and he will become an abbot on the holy mountain. And sure enough, that is the man that we celebrate now with the lifelong perspective on the theology of theosis. In his book, The Homilies, The Art of Salvation, that he wrote, he's speaking continually about the transcendent mysteries of the Trinity and how our very high calling is to be in communion with God, to know God through unceasing prayer. And such was the nature of his prayer that many, many people, just like St. Seraphim of Seraph, when they would meet Father Ephraim, occasionally they would see him radiating light as an indication that he was filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Ironically, he has been or was in the States for roughly 30 years. And during that time, fortunately for us, he planted many monasteries, male and female convents in Florida. We have two of them. And each time we meet one of those abbots or one of those abbesses, we see that they're cut from the same cloth as Father Ephraim. They are humble. They are people of prayer. They are people of fidelity, of devotion, of unceasing prayer, of the practice of the Jesus prayer, pursuit of sanctification, and they embrace the theotic life in Christ to be divinized. We, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, whether we know it or not, are receiving many, many gifts in America. How is it that a man like Hank Hanegraaff could become a Greek Orthodox Christian? How is it that a man like Father Ephraim, who was born and raised in Greece, would come and start a new life in America and, pl and plant monasteries past the age of 60? It can only be by God's grace. It can only be through the love and devotion and the yearning of the people in America that we receive guidance, spiritual guidance, so that we may grow in Christ. Let us let us open our hearts. Let us seek this type of divine knowledge, whether it be from a man born in America who embraced the faith or a man born in Greece. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, we come before you with humble thanksgiving in our hearts as we celebrate the divine Eucharist. We give thanks for every blessing in our life, but we give thanks on this day especially for your servants, Mr. Hank Hanegraaff, and for the elder Ephraim, two men of God from very different worlds who found the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, which is you. May we also, with such fervor and devotion, make our way to such communion with you. We ask this in your name, for your holy and blessed, to ages of ages. Amen.